Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas for the IBM Edge conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. And this is theCUBE, our flagship <coughs> program. We go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise, broadcasting live, shifting it over to YouTube, and bringing out data, finding out what's going on, finding out where the stories are, where the action is. Our, our next guests are Steve DeLuca, SVP of Sales from MicroStrategy, and Ray Scardelli, VP of Sales and Marketing from MicroStrategy. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank um, you. So the, uh, the show here is pretty awesome. Tell the folks out there real quick, what's, what's Edge all about this year? What's going on with the event and uh, what's the vibe? What are you guys seeing? Well, you know, I think, I think for us it's learning about some of the new features and functions that IBM has uh, put together in their products. Um, the mix between business analytics, big data, power and storage and how that all converges um, to, you know, for the betterment of our customers. So talk about the company, what do you guys do? Well, so MicroStrategies is a, is a, is a um, business partner, solution provider, integrator. Um, we focus in uh, two areas, uh, business process solutions and uh, um, infrastructure solutions. Around the infrastructure solution space, we're primarily IBM, and, uh, and, and, and we have um, analytics practice, security and mobility practice, infrastructure solutions practice, of course, and, and cloud solutions practice, as well as our business solutions, which is primarily uh, uh, enterprise content management. Ray, what are you seeing for your company's activity out there? Is there traction with IBM on the, on, on the infrastructure side? They're saying infrastructure's back. Did it ever go away? I mean, I mean it was never gone. But you know, it, it, it's funny because you know, we, we, we've been in a number of sessions, we're talking about cloud you know, and virtualization, and we've seen that. We've been in the business for you know, many years. We've seen cloud um, and infrastructure you know, being around for many more years than, than what we're seeing now. Um, but, you know, from, a, from an infrastructure standpoint, you know, we've done a lot of cloud enablement, we've done a lot of hybrid cloud and uh, hybrid solutions um, around the cloud, and, you know, you need infrastructure for all of that. You need, um, you, need you know, mainframes, you need a, you know, power, system X, um, and storage, and wrap it around with solutions and virtualization. Yeah, so we, we see cloud as, a, as an extension of the core business that we've been doing for years, infrastructure, uh, virtualization, provisioning, um, now cloud, uh, hybrid, on-premises, off-premises. So you, you have to, you oversee the sales force and the growth is big, you must do all kinds of market testing around figuring out where to skate, where the puck's going to be, if you will, or just kind of where the growth is. A lot of people are saying cloud's pretty much hyped up right now. We were just broadcasting at the OpenStack Summit last week, and man, it was Kool-Aid central for a cloud. <laughs> um, I mean, we're not even close to the trough of disillusionment. It's really not prime time. From a deployment standpoint, there's some stuff going on. Do you see that growth coming sooner, faster, or is it still in, kind of still mobilized around the data center? Well, it's definitely coming sooner, and, and, uh, and, and it's right on top of us. But again, it's really, it's not a revolution, it's an evolution. So customers that are doing it and deploying it are really taking what they've done a step further now. And we're well positioned to do that because that's what we've been doing, right? And now you mentioned anticipating where the growth is. We've had an analytics practice in place for over two years. So it's already well established and, and doing that's probably well. in the cloud. You do a lot of cloud the analytics. That seems to be um, a nice solution for the We're cloud. getting into that space. We've been doing it you know, with customers uh, in their data centers, uh, in their marketing and financial um, departments. And so, yeah, now we're, we're now embracing the cloud and deploying that. Let's talk about the cloud, because it's interesting you mentioned continuum um, um, evolution. We've called it also a continuum. There's no real radical shifts. Right but there are some radical disruptions in terms of process improvement. Can you share some insight with the folks out there? Um, you mentioned business process, one of your practices. I mean, that's a business process. Looking at you know, agile on the development side is certainly interesting, but when you come in and say, hey, CIO, you, here's your value chains of how you do things, what areas are being tweaked, if you will, in the process that you could share? Well, so that's, that's a good question because it changes every day. <laughs> um, but to, to give you an example, we were working with a customer, Music Mastermind, that, um, was on Amazon, we ported them to uh, um, Smart Cloud Enterprise and, and then um, to, um, to Software, uh, software right. 
before the IBM acquisition. So as IBM acquired SoftLayer, we already had experience with that, had a customer, had a reference, and now they're they're going into production. So we're again ahead That's of the curve. That's good timing, <laughs> somewhat by <laughs> chance, but but you know timing is everything, right? What was so, good about SoftLayer? The bare metal as a service. You like the flexibility they had, or is it? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that um, that SoftLayer has a, a much. Um, much more developed approach to being able to, to provision and move applications in and out, um, especially in a hybrid scenario where, you know, Steve had mentioned um, music mastermind. In that hybrid scenario, it's a lot easier to do, um, to, to spin, you know, spin servers and storage up. So how did the customer get into the Amazon? Was it shadow IT or they were born in the cloud? They were, devel they were born in the cloud and they were developing um, uh, on Amazon, you know, it was put the credit card in, but as the costs changed um, and, and SoftLayer came ab about, um, we were able to show them a better a better way to do that. And they did need that hybrid It just solution. sounds so funny, born in the cloud. Hey, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was born in the I'm cloud. In the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, it's almost ridiculously uh, the statement to hear that, but, but that's the reality. These young kids coming in, and you guys must hire young guns coming in the organization that never installed a Linux patch before. Well, right. They're like, ah, oh, what? I had to load <laughs> software on a server? I yeah. mean, you seeing some of that in your organization? So we have, we have a, an arm of the company that actually does um, recruiting and staffing, and so for projects like this where we need some resource, I mean, we're 125 people, right? We don't have everything for every project, so we'll, we'll go out and find people to staff projects and manage the projects ourselves. Um, so yeah, so that's an important part of our flexibility and our value to the customers when we get into things like this. It, yeah, I mean, so we can we use we you know, we use the experience and and some of the new folks that we have in to move some other applications uh, into the cloud. Voice recording is another one of the practices that we have. We do a lot of 911, you know, emergency call recording. We've moved a number of customers into that cloud. Um, using software as well. So the stuff we've learned from Music Mastermind, we're able to translate that into some real um, business acumen and be able to move some other customers over. Let me ask you the question of what's changed in the past couple of years. Obviously, um, IBM, big player, big channel presence. They're not the only ones who have had an indirect sales channel, have partners, make their partners successful. How has the channel and the service models changed? I mean, obviously gross profit is great around services. You want to be able to wrap services around stuff, right? So right. how is IBM to work with, and what do they need to do better to, to take you guys to the next level? Well, so IBM has the strategy, right? They have the, whether it's acquisitions or development and the ability to integrate all of that into a, into a solution, not just a solution, but, but a, a comprehensive strategy. So we embrace that. Right, and we, we depend on them to take the leadership role in those areas, but we're the integrator. When the customer goes to deploy the project, we're the architects, we design, develop, help them develop, implement, and support, and we, and we lean on IBM, all aspects of IBM, whether it's but software services. But you're talking to the customer, you have to get their trust. Right. Yep. You, you're working directly and right. supporting the deals. And, and, that's, and so that's why it's important for IBM to to not just go in and say we have a solution and you know it's, it's just Jones IBM, throw. right? Yeah. And here it is. So IBM yeah, yeah. takes a, a higher level approach and says, look, we, we support the environment. We acknowledge that there's other solutions out there that we have to yeah. help the customer manage and, and be that you know higher level interface and not just a niche player. So that's really behind our commitment to are IBM. Are they flexible to work with from a tool chest standpoint? I mean, they, well, I mean basically I look at IBM as like one big toolbox. You well, don't you, have to use IBM anymore. You can use a little bit of that, OpenStack, you guys use SoftLayer you mentioned? But you, you know, one, one of the things about IBM that we, we think is very important is there was a business partner charter that they came out with in the mid 90s. And that strategy, they've only enhanced. A number of other vendors have changed, altered, gotten rid of a lot of their partner programs. What IBM has done over time has, has always kept the base and they've enhanced it. So re, you, know, you take that enhancement and you take the best of breed products that IBM has across the server and storage line and, and wrap it with some minimum margin and some real enhancements to allow us to make some money on not only on our services but also on the hardware. It's a good combination for us. So, so as they say in Jersey, you guys are from Jersey, I grew up there too as well. A lot of dough in cloud, right? So how do you guys, a lot of bread to be made there. So what do you guys look at hopefully. in terms of, yeah, hopefully. Well there's tons, of, I mean there's tons of services. We're seeing the huge, I mean it's not talking about in the main press these days around the just this go to market services are huge. If you yeah. talk to anyone on the services side, they see a lot of dough on that area. But like in terms of like the forecast, 
How much of cloud do you see shaping your business in your, in your customer base? How much percentage of the cloud business will be there? Well, that's a good question. I mean, it changes so quickly and it's right on top of us. It's important to be right in there and, and ahead of it, but you know, we're not three steps ahead. <laughs> I'm not even sure we're ahead. Uh, it, it's, it's just really happening quickly. So um, to say that we've you know, fully anticipated and, and planned, it's, it's, uh, it's not quite that How about simple, the customers, right? what are they looking for? Is it more app development drivers or, or infrastructure kind of retweaking, re-engineering? You know, that, that, that's also interesting because we're seeing, we're seeing customers move the easier things. You know, email systems, um, some development. We're seeing them, you know, putting their toe in the water, if you will, a little bit, and just making sure that, you know, that some of that stuff sticks and it's available. Um, and then, of course, the security thing is a big concern for a number of different Security's industries. Security's huge. So, I mean, that's like the last thing to drop in terms of yeah. going to the cloud. Just, well, you got to have it built into the cloud, but like the low-hanging fruit is, is, would be what? What would, you example, what would be a good example of low-hanging fruit? Analytics? I mean, people are putting analytics well, in the cloud, or is that um, data? Analytics, they, email. They things like salesforce.com and right. know, they're, Web they're, stuff, they're website. They're not mission critical. Yeah, um, it, it, and it's stuff that, that IT can easily hand off. Yeah. Um, but we're used to dealing with enterprise level clients and they're not necessarily putting their mission critical stuff in the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not in just, the yeah, just they, yet. They, they, and and there's a lot of workload considerations. You got to look at security, the data right. compliance issues. So there's a lot of private cloud uh, deployment going on. It makes a lot of sense, right? Provisioning, utility-based pricing, chargebacks, all that stuff makes a lot of sense and incrementally going forward with, with the more important mission critical applications. But you know, there's a lot of infrastructure still being deployed and, and you know it's going to run somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so it's not you know, infrastructure ma infrastructure matters. It does, and, and it's and it's going to continue to be there. Um, Talk about your customer base. You guys have a small, medium-sized business operation. You have large enterprises. Is the geography regional? Are you guys global? What do some of your customer bases look like? Well, we, you know, we as you mentioned, we have from you know industry, you know, enterprise, mid-market, and SMB, and we you know we're north northeast based. So we're New Jersey, New York, um, uh, Mid Atlantic, Boston, Boston to DC. We're Boston to DC. We're, yeah. we're, we're <laughs> trying to expand to, and we're, so we're mostly we're mostly regional, um, and and you know the way we manage. You, know, you the guys way have we other vendors in there, not just IBM, right? You work with other like HP, and other. Uh, yeah, we're primarily uh, primarily, uh, we're primarily IBM. We're a Microsoft IBM. partner on the business solution side. Okay. For for uh, uh, <laughs> as well as uh, Alfresco Autonomy and, and those players in, in that space, ECM. But on the infrastructure side, it's primarily IBM and some complementary, not IBM, but mostly yeah. complementary. And now products. SoftLayer. Well, you software. had SoftLayer before. You right? had SoftLayer before, yeah. now it's an All IBM right, so tell company. me about the acquisition. So. Was it a surprise? Did you know it was coming? Did IBM give you a little signals on the table? No, not really. No. No. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're not no. privy to those conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah, did, you, did you tell us, right? Come on. <laughs> but were you surprised? No, I think you know. I think it, it was more. We were working with uh, we were working with Softlayer because they were the best of breed um, at the time, and we needed that. We needed that flexibility in the solution, or we were going to potentially lose our customer, you know, back to the yeah. Amazon folks. So, you know, as I was we were very skeptical them, on that deal at first. I was like, man, that's a terrible deal. I was really critical of it. Just like I missed the forecast, Godzilla breaking <laughs> box office records. I had that as the biggest flop of the year. Uh -huh. I called it the John Carter <laughs> How that of, of this year. <laughs> I'm getting hate mail, all kinds of stuff. I can't even say on the queue. I'm having to do a retract. Uh, it had a hot opening, we'll see. Yeah, but, but you know, it's clearly soft layer, there was some stuff in there. That was interesting to IBM, right? For their customers. Bare metal as a service, having some flexibility on premise and from the hosting. So and, and there again, IBM's ability to take an acquisition and wrap their investment and development around it and turn it into something a lot more. And yeah. do it quickly. Well right. the thing about soft layer, at IBM Pulse and Impact we saw firsthand. The DevOps culture is driving everything right now. So what I'm seeing is, and we're seeing from talking to folks is, and certainly Wikibon, the research teams all over, is that the young guns that are coming in, the new programmers, they're the new rock stars. And that's not just software guys, it's infrastructure guys. There's a new build out kind of wave coming. And it's systems, it's like, you know, our age, right? You know, anyone over the age of 35 has a, is an old systems guy. You know, yeah. we're like, what, kids 38? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I wish. You're living with that. I still got my hair. Um, so, good stuff. So, so, what's changed in the channel in the past five to seven years? What's been the most, from an indirect, from a partner standpoint, across the industry, what's your observation? Well, you know, I, I think from, you know, I think, you know, from an IBM standpoint, uh, we're, we're seeing a lot more push 
from the IBM Direct teams out to the channel, because um, I believe that they think that um, we have the skills, we have invested in you know, the technology, we have all the certifications that are, are needed, so I think that they look at us almost like an old IBM branch office and they, and they use us like that. So together we go and we make a powerful team going to the customer, the power of IBM behind the power of a partner that's level five skill. Yeah. So guys, final question for you. Share with the folks out there, in your own words, each of you if you could, why in this time of history, you've seen the movie before, you've seen cycles of innovation come and go, why is this point in time so interesting and exciting for the folks who aren't inside the trenches, aren't in front of the customers, people looking at the tech industry saying, what's all the hubbub about, all this cloud mobile social stuff? Why is this year so critical? Well, so, um, so it is, it is uh, rapidly changing, right? Um, there's technology, there's, there's cloud. Uh, trying to figure out what direction it's going, what the customer's looking for, right? And, and be the people in front of the customer saying, what's your crowd, cloud strategy? Not only that, but what are you trying to really accomplish, right? And how do we help you? Um, and, then, and then leveraging all the resources we have. Um, I mean, that's, that's really what this year is all about because customers are trying to figure out and they're looking to us to help them figure out how to embrace the technology and how to deploy which technology. And not just not just that, but you know, the, the software, the management of it. Do I do I send it off to the cloud software, or whoever? Do I manage it myself? So, you know, that that's really I think what's it's a sea change. Yeah, going on. It, it is. It certainly is. Ray, what's your take on that? Well, I th you know, I think that that um, now more than ever, there's more there's more data, and it's more unstructured data than there ever was, ever, and ha getting a handle on that being able to manage that, um, where to put it, what to actually look for to do business analytics with big data, and how do you do that, and how do you keep it secure? There has, hasn't been a time that I can remember that all those things combined um, are as important as they are today. It's like that perfect storm movie. You got the data management piece of the business, the convergence is happening, you got the cloud analytics. I mean, the tsunami of data is certainly yeah, like. Certainly is. I mean, that could be a backbreaker for some companies, not getting it right. Okay, we're getting the signal to break, guys. Ray, th Steven, thank you for coming on theCUBE. MicroStrategies, a big partner of IBM, out there making it all happen. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks, John. Thanks.